On the news, Nigeria is committed to investing in food security, Buhari tells UN Summit. President Buhari restates commitment to tackle terrorism at UN General Assembly. An INEC partner assists the agency for delivery of credible elections. President Mohamed Obari has expressed concern over the trend of coup in several West African countries. The president said the unconstitutional takeover of power is eroding the democratic gains of the sub-region. He spoke on the issue, among several others, during his address on, on Friday at a general debate of the 76th session of the United Nations General Assembly in New York, U.S. The US. Our details in this report. Over 80 world leaders are present at the 76th session of the United Nations General Assembly in New York, a far cry from last year's assembly, where the scourge of COVID-19 prevented a large gathering of any kind. In his speech, President Mohamed Obari said that Nigeria will spare no efforts of getting rid of Boko Haram terrorists, especially in the northeast part of the West African nation. Boko Haram terrorist group so fragmented by internal strife and weakened by our defense forces is still active and preying on soft targets. Nigeria will continue to work closely with United Nations counter-terrorism bodies and the ent entities with a view to bringing the scourge to an end. Buhari also called for a worldwide application of the Arms Trade Treaty I think that Nigeria was concerned about illicit trading and movement of small arms, which is said has been increasing criminality and insurgency in the country. Nigeria remains deeply concerned over the illicit trade, transfer, and circulation of small arms and light weapons. Their excessive accumulation and uncontrolled spread in many regions of the world are having devastating humanitarian and socio-economic consequences, especially on the continent of Africa. It is on this note that my delegation calls for the worldwide application of the Arms Trade Treaty to codify accountability in conventional arms trade, which is critical to the security of nations. President Buhari said Nigeria is committed to the non-proliferation of nuclear weapons and has always supported the view that it should involve all states. Nigeria is fully committed to nuclear non-proliferation and has always supported the view that it should involve all states. Disarmament conventions deserve the support of all states, small, large, nuclear or non-nuclear. Nuclear weapons remain the ultimate agents of mass destruction, and their total elimination should be the final objective of all disarmament processes within the broad spectrum of goals being pursued by the United Nations. President Buhari emphasized that democratic gains recorded in West Africa are now being eroded by activities of power grabbers in the region, a thinly veiled reference to recent military takeovers in Mali and Guinea, both in West Africa. Fola Shadi Ogrindi, TV360 News. Now joining me to discuss this further is legal practitioner Adewali Ajadi, who joins me via Skype from Abuja. Thank you so much for joining us on News Now. Well, the president spoke about quite a number of issues ranging from building a climate resilient economy to the recent trend of unconstitutional takeover of power in West Africa, inequality in COVID-19 distribution, and so on. Was there anything that particularly stood out for you um, or in the president's speech or perhaps something missing?
Now, I'm afraid we've lost uh, Mr. Ajaji, but um, we'll get back to him sometime in the news bulletin. Uh, moving on now, Nigeria so far has 3.5 trillion naira post harvest loss every year. Uh, this has been attributed to the inability of Nigerian farmers to access proper storage facilities as well as other equipment. The situation has in turn made food insecurity prevalent in the country. In this report, TV3 sisters Abisola Adebayo tells us how a Kaduna based organization uses technology to boost the country's food value chain with its low cost solar bubble dryer. Nigeria is the second largest producer of tomatoes in Africa, harvesting about 1.5 million tons annually. But the government says 45% of the crop never makes it to the market because farmers lack the resources to process and preserve their tomatoes. They even run into losses due to spoilage before getting to the market. To combat this challenge, the Developmental Association for Renewable Energy in Nigeria unveiled this solar power dryer to overcome post-harvest losses. We are forced to import all forms of uh, tomato uh, this, uh, product. Why? This is waste for our country, waste for the people who produce, because they produce it and they throw it away. And this is what we are trying to avoid, trying to sensitize the people, educate them, tell them that, look, we have a better way of doing this thing. They have access to this energy relatively cheaper than all other sources. And if they have it, that's all. Some of these losses will be curtailed and there'll be a lot of money in the hands of those people. And it will improve their livelihood and will somehow fight, really, in concrete terms, fight against this poverty. The dryer preserves the crops before harvesting, reducing the quantum of food crops being damaged and also financial losses incurred by farmers. Beyond that, it helps prevent contamination, thereby retaining the natural taste of the tomatoes. What they do, some to avoid even the loss, they just cut it and put it on the ground anywhere in dead where you have uh, animal feces, people who have urinated there before, that place will not be clean. That thing that they are drying in the open sun, I mean, it comes out as a junk because when the sun hits it directly, the ultraviolet rays of the sun destroy most of the nutrients. Now we have a very pure, hygienically dry sun. You see, it's covered. If you look at, look at the, the membrane there, which has a property of filtering the ultraviolet rays of the sun. So it maintains over 90% of all its ingredients. The device is a step away from the conventional method of drying, where farmers spread their harvested product out across open land. It's a covered mobile device that does not need electricity to function. It blows hot air across the product until it is completely dry. Director of the group, Ahmed Yahaya, says it also has a low operating and maintaining cost. You don't need any maintenance. The only maintenance you need for the solar panels is to clean the surface, especially now in Hamatan, where we have uh, dust. So every morning you just take a, a humid uh, towel, uh, soak it a little in water, just squeeze it and use it to, to wipe the surface of the panel. That's why it will function. This development is coming at a time when the federal government is stepping up its efforts towards enhancing tomato processing industry in the country. The aim is for Nigeria to achieve self-sufficiency in tomato production in the next one year. Abisola Adibayo, TV360 News. Climate change is one of the most serious environmental threats facing farmers worldwide. It affects agriculture in several ways, including its direct impact on food security. In this next report, our correspondent, Mary Kanu, takes a look at how much climate changes have affected farmers, food production, and the ways to salvage the situation. For the last two decades, the world has experienced a constant change in weather patterns, severely affecting the Earth's agricultural ability. As a result, one-tenth of the global population, as many as 811 million people, were undernourished in 2020, an increase of 118 million from 2019, according to the United Nations. At the United Nations General Meeting on Friday, President Muhammad Buhari alerted world leaders on the drastic effect of climate change in Africa, which has triggered food insecurity, loss of livelihood, and rising sea levels. The impact of climate change is already with us in Nigeria. Many persons in various ways. Conflict trigger, food insecurity, 
drying up of lakes, loss of livelihood, and youth migration, among others. The trend is the same in many other countries that are threatened by forest fires, rising seas, drought, and desertification. Extreme climatic events such as flooding and drought have led to soil degradation resulting in low crop yields affecting the cost of food produced in the open markets. Things are very expensive as you can see. Everything is high. What we bought yesterday like 1,000, they've added almost 500. So every, everything is very expensive in the markets. Nobody has the market day before nine day now. So before, how much should they buy the tomato? And how much should they sell? Now I'm not actually buying market to sell an awala. The practice of rain-fed agriculture and other land use activities account for over 25% of greenhouse gas emissions, increasing vulnerability to climate change impact. We as a people, our government at all levels, have not done enough to equip our farmers with the right information that will help them to provide adequate food for us. And it's not only information you give farmers, there are other things that need to aid that. Government policies, other environmentally degrading practices we have adopted are all responsible for what is uh, besetting our society today. And food strategies will continue if we do not um, adopt agricultural sustainable and environmentally sustainable policies that are beneficial to the entire world in the long run. There is a need for sustainable agriculture to meet the increasing demand for food for the growing population in Nigeria. In order to ensure food security, we need to understand the climatic changes around us and how it affects agricultural productivity and rural livelihood. Mary Kanu, TV360, Nigeria. Now let's now head back to the story where President Mohamed Obari spoke at the uh, 76th session of the United Nations General Assembly. He raised a number of issues. And I think I have um, legal practitioner Diwali Ajadi who joins me now um, from, by Skype from, from Abuja. Thank you so much for joining us again. Uh, the president spoke about quite a number of issues ranging from building a climate resilient economy for the recent trend of unconstitutional takeover of power in West Africa. He also spoke about inequality in COVID-19 distribution and so many other issues. Now, was there anything that particularly stood out for you in the president's speech? Oh, thank you very much. Um, and what is clear is that the president had a long list of things that are critical that he wanted to highlight. But for me, the critical issue was his comment on the UN Security Council and the injustices of not having African representation on the Security Council. Because if the Security Council issue was taken seriously, and he pointed out that this has been delayed for about 16 years or more, um, then Nigeria would have a platform to speak, not just at the General Assembly, but speak to the issues that are critical to us. But it was a very um, wide-ranging speech. There are critical issues of climate that you have um, mentioned in your bulletin. There are issues of arms proliferation and the balance view of what is happening across West Africa, especially around the issues of regime change by military, but highlighting the fact that the, one of the catalysts for regime change by the military is because unilaterally people are elongating their time by changing the constitution. It was a very, very balanced way of looking at it. Even his comment on vaccination was a bit more nuanced than most African leaders have made before the UN pointing out that the world has done good things, but also pointing out their shortcomings with regards to ensuring that vaccination are well spread. I also like the fact that I highlighted the significance and importance of the empowerment of women. I also like the fact that we are talking now of food systems and the critical nature of food systems to the, the well-being of our people. So there were a number of very powerful issues. I especially like his point as well on racial equality. When he commented on the issue of racial equality and racial injustices against African people, he pointed the issue of institutional racism, which is a very powerful signal to the rest of the world that Nigeria is not only concerned with its own material well-being, 
but checks takes um critical importance to the injustices against African people across the world. So it's, it's, it's for anybody who really wants to Indeed, um, legal practitioner Adewali Ajedi, I'm really sorry we have to cut you short here, but thank you so much for your contributions. Uh, moving on, the Independence National Electoral Commission and the National Population Commission have opted for a partnership in a bid to enhance the credibility of the National Registrar of Voters. Annex Chairman Mahmoud Yakub noted that the commission is saddled with the responsibility of registering eligible voters, hence the need to be adequately aware of births and deaths records across the country. On his part, the Population Commission's chairman, Nasser Issa Kwari, revealed that arrangements have been reached at an appreciable level for the national election to hold in the 2022, adding that the commission would swing into action as soon as President Buhari makes the proclamation. We are finalizing a memorandum of understanding, which will be signed very soon. In the MOU, we have more clearly defined the scope and duration of our collaboration, as well as the responsibilities of the two commissions. I want to reassure the NPC that we shall continue to strengthen our existing collaboration. Perhaps you may wish to start by availing the commission, that is INEC, the list of prominent Nigerians who have passed on, civil and public servants compiled from the official records of ministries, departments, and agencies and other Nigerians from hospital and funeral records across the country. We appreciate that this is a Herculean task, but that is partly why we have a National Population Commission. For the past 16 years, we've not been able to conduct any national census due to so many factors, but um, Recently, we got the note. We are likely to conduct census uh, in 2002. Mr. <laughs> Mr. President has um, uh, sent correspondence. He's prepared. Uh, he's willing to conduct the census, but this will come from him. He's going to make the proclamation by himself. We'll take a break here, but still to come, President Buhari calls for equitable distribution of COVID-19 at UN General Assembly. Details of this story and more right after this break. Now here is a recap of some of our top stories. President Mohamed Buhari has expressed concern over the trend of coup in several West African countries. The president said the unconstitutional takeover of power is eroding the democratic gains of the sub-region. He spoke on the issue among several others during his address on Friday at the general debate of the 76th session of the United Nations General Assembly in New York. But in case you missed any of our news bulletin or for more updates, do log on to our website on www.tv36nigeria.com. You can also follow us on our social media platforms on Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and Google Plus at TV36 Nigeria. On Facebook, we are at TV360 Online. President Muhammad Buhari has urged world leaders for to of developed countries to ensure fair disbursement of COVID-19 vaccines to poorer nations. The president made this call on Friday while addressing over 70 world leaders at the 76th um, UN General Assembly in New York. Buhari emphasized that gaps in global vaccination could hamper the goal of eradicating the deadly virus. I would like to reiterate my call for a fairer and more equitable distribution of vaccines in all countries so that together we can fight and contain the pandemic. The rising wave of newer and more contagious strains 
makes this even more urgent. No country can afford the socio-economic implications of prolonged shutdown. It is imperative to underscore that no one is safe until everyone is safe. We'll take a break here and return with more stories and business to stay with us. Well, up next is business news and stock market review with Abisola Adebayo. Over to you, Abisola. Thank you very much, Falashade. Welcome to business news. Nigeria's rising debt profile has continued to raise concern, failing fears of a debt crisis in the nearest future. This comes as President Mohamed Brawi sought the approval of the National Assembly to borrow another $4 billion and 710 million euro Heroes loan from bilateral and multilateral organizations to fund a deficit in the 2021 budget. While the Senate says the borrowings are necessary, industry watchers have warned of more economic challenges if the debt burden keeps rising. Our correspondent, Falashade Oguride, tells us more. The debate on whether or not government should borrow more to fund the 2022 budget reached a climax when the Senate announced that it has approved the 2022-2024 MTEF FSP paper. The document details President Buhari's request for approval of projected new borrowings of 4.89 trillion naira, a move President of the Senate, Hamad Lawan, says is unavoidable. When we had plenty of money, we didn't prioritize the construction of infrastructure in Nigeria. Today, we realize we need to construct infrastructure because that is the only way to develop the country. Unfortunately, we don't have the kind of resources we had before. Now, our options are very limited because our revenues are limited. I agree with all my colleagues who said we need to reduce borrowing. Data from the Debt Management Office shows that as of March 2021, Nigeria's total public debt hit 33.1 trillion naira. Recently, the DMO also announced that Nigeria has raised another $4 billion through euro bonds, raising the country's external debt stock figure to $14.37 billion. The foreign loans that we are borrowing these days don't expect forgiveness. Because they are commercial loans, they are not bilateral loans, they are not multilateral in nature. Owners of bonds, those who have received the bond certificate from a country, will certainly go for their money. The seriousness of Nigeria's debt crisis is further highlighted in an official report, which indicates that the country is spending practically all of its revenue on servicing debts. A concern President Mohamed Buhari re-echoed at the UN General Assembly on Friday. The COVID-19 pandemic has increased the risk of new need of different debt where vital public financial resources are allocated to external debt servicing and payments at the expense of domestic health and financing for critical development needs. Therefore, there is an urgent need to consider expansion and extension of debt service suspension initiatives to include all developing these developed countries and small island development states facing fiscal and liquidity challenges. The big question to Nigeria's debt problem is who will pay these debts? Former President Olusha Gomba Sanjo just might have given a clue to the answer when he said borrowing to accumulate debt for the next generation is questionable. Fulashade Ogurinde, TV360 News. We'll take a break here and return with a review of the stock market.
Nigerian stocks closed the week trading on a positive note on the back of renewed bargain hunting, thereby maintaining previous sessions gains. The bulls maintain its grip on the equities as the force of investors' interest in shares helps lift the benchmark index by 0.23%, even though trade remained conducted in an atmosphere of relative inactivity. Compared to previous sessions trading, today's data shows 44% improvement in volume at 633 million units of shares valued at over six billion right now that's a really huge gain for the market and it's looking like the month of september might actually make a positive impact on the market moving on now to our gainers list farm deco led the gainers with 9.74 percent share price appreciation it's closely followed by sovereigns who is our second gainer for today on the losing side stoa nigeria came out last with an end of day price depreciation of 9.38 percent and it's followed by presco right here on the global market, however, the FTSE, the Dow Jones, and the Nikkei, London's FTSE ended lower on Friday as concerns about a, a slowdown in global economic growth outweighed gains in healthcare and energy stocks. The Dow also dropped today as China Evergrande missed a key interest payment and Bitcoin tumbled on China's crackdown. Japan stocks Nikkei jumped 2% on Friday as investors seek clarity on the Evergrande situation. That's all on Stock Market Review. Over to for the rest of the news. Well, thank you very much, Emma Bissela, for that update. On the foreign scene, Ethiopian government says it will not persecute an Oromo Liberation Army commander, Galicia Dengue, outside defected to the government. Uh, this is despite the long standing reports of human rights violations by the rebel group. According to an official, while the act of this group has been designated as insurgency, any individual who abandons the group would not be held accountable. Golicha will fought for the OLA over, for over 27 years, including 10 years leading the Southern Command, is the biggest name so far to lay down arms following a call from government and traditional leaders. Well, up next is Entertainment Report. CEO of Maven Records, Don Jazzy, has unveiled a new artist, Majit, into his record label. Sharing this news on his verified Instagram page, the music producer also posted a video of the new act while announcing the release of his experimental project. We activated a new Maven. He goes by the name Magix, simply Magix. Talk to now, I'll not be hearing Magix, Megahix, Megjix, whatever. His name is Magix. Let's put an X. Acknowledging the welcome, the new artist, Magix, took to his Instagram handle to announce himself as the new member of the Maven family. Known as one of the most popular record labels in Nigeria, Maven is home to some of the finest Nigerian artists, including fast-rising acts like Aya Star, Brema, Ladipo. Budding Nigerian entertainer Olakira recently hosted a debut private listening party in Lagos where he performed tracks off his recently released EP, Four Play. The listening event organized by U and I Music, Olakira's sign management, is the artist's first hosted event since he came into the limelight in 2020 after the release of In My Maserati and Maserati Remix. Iconic Nollywood actress Genevieve Naji has debunked suggestions that she might be experiencing a creative drought. She recently reacted to a fan's request for a new film feature with the assurance that she's currently working hard to return to the screens. Naji has so far not featured in any production since her 2018 acclaimed directorial debut Lionheart and British actor Adewale Akinoye Agbaje's Farming also released in the same year. That's all there is on the entertainment segment of News Now.
Away from entertainment and out of sports, the Rwandan Cycling Federation has announced that the 2025 World Road Cycling Championships will be held in Rwanda, a first in Africa. However, the International Cycling Union Congress must ratify the decision before it becomes official. Two applications, Rwanda and Morocco, were in the running for the first World Championships of Cycling organized in Africa. I need to wrap on our news bulletin. Thank you for watching. I am Fola Shadi. Or green day. Bye for now.